Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again and welcome back to AEL. Um, this is the first video that I've made in quite a while. I had to move houses and that's complete now and I'm going to do a short video today. Now, I have got this old Asus, I think it's, yeah, 20 volt, 7.5 amp, 150 watt. Uh, laptop power supply which I acquired about a year ago. I do have the mains plug that goes into here. It's one of those type. Um, it needs a bit of a clean up too. Uh, what I'm planning on doing is this end here is all stuffed. This is one of ASUS's special plugs. As we can see it's um, yeah. There's a pin in the center of the plug here instead of a hole and that's the actual positive, the tip and it's actually encased in a open surrounding like a female orifice it looks like kind of a hidden penis um, yeah so getting this type of particular plug to repair this power supply to actually use back on the laptop it was designed for is next to impossible to get hold of I mean it probably could be done but what I'm planning on doing is I've got this 2.1 female um, DC adapter plug. I'm going to cut this crap off, it's about to fall off anyway. Um, if I just do that it'll probably fly off. Maybe not. Uh, and I'm going to solder this onto the end of this and I'm going to use this power supply to power my soldering line because it's one volt higher than the 19 volt one that's on there now doesn't make much difference but this is a higher current power supply at 7.5 amps on the secondary so what I need to do first is bugger that off and I need to cut and strip this end back because I reckon it's got a shield maybe well that might be the negative uh, I just need to uh, strip back the wires and actually put it on a multimeter power it up and see if the supply even, even works. So I'll get to doing that. Let's cut this bullshit off. Uh, okay, it looks like a two core conductor. So it's got a fairly thick center conductor and an outer shield. Uh, so yeah, this, this is a very stiff cable too, so it's designed to carry quite a fair bit of current as it would be able to because it's seven and a half amps. So let's see. I think it might be that one I can do it on. There we go. Strip that back. I've lost a couple of the conductors so I might redo that because um, yeah that was terrible. Uh, so I'll go to the next size up. Just so I'm not running the risk of losing conductors. There we go. So that's stripped back there. So now I need to fold back the shield or the ground. That would be the negative. And we'll have a look at the center conductor which is very stiff so I need to just twist these together just so I can keep them neat don't know how I'm going to go soldering to it but soon find out and there's that stripped off so now I need to measure across the two pins two wires and see what sort of voltage we get. So I'm going to first power this up on the dim bulb just to make sure that there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, I've got the dim bulb hooked up to the power supply. So I'll turn the thing on. I didn't like the looks of that, but anyway. Let's see what sort of voltage we've got at the output here. 20.45 volt. So the power supply is working. Why the um, dim bulb fluttered like that, I don't know. It could be the capacitors internal to this charging or the limiting of the current 
of the dim bulb may have been affecting it. But so far it seems alright, so I'll just turn that off and let that discharge a bit and take a swig of coffee. Turn it on again. That is really weird. Anyway, I'm going to safely assume that that's just normal operation and the supply was working fine. So now I need to solder this uh, plug onto this um, lead. And I have verified that the soldering wire requires a positive tip. So this positive wire has to solder to the tip. Now this wire is awfully thick so it's not going to go through this this hole in the uh, plug adapter here. There's a, it's only a little tiny hole and that is not going to fit through there. Or it might just barely. Um, I'll cobble it together and then we'll solder it. Amazingly I managed to actually get it in there. So I'm going to try and solder this. Just lightly for now, that should do the trick up there. Cut the excess off. And yes, I have remembered to put the boot on first. Otherwise, um, yeah, you, it would be awfully difficult to um, uh, put it on. Because you'd have to then take it apart just to put the boot on. Every job has a perfect tool, as they say. Okay, let me squeeze it that way and that way. Doesn't appear to want to crimp around it because the cable's too thick. Um, yeah, it might be a little bit touch and go there, but I'll go with it. Um, let me solder the other lead part of the lead to it after I sort this mess out. Um, yeah, now this is going to be kind of awkward to do. Actually, I might do this a little bit differently just to hold the connector. I sort of need to get that to go on top of what I've just tinned. Um, like that is how I wanted it and then I can just solder him down not that I can really see what I'm doing but I think that is soldered for the most part well, at least it should be. Alright, so now I can put that away and test the thing. Make sure that we've got power. Um, I believe I can fly. No, I believe I can throw that on the floor. And that as well. I believe I can uh, get that up the centre. Yes, I can. Good. Turn it back on to voltage, voltage, and I will plug it back into the dim bowl and contact. There we go, 20.45 volt. Excellent. So that's working and it's the correct polarity. Um, so that's pretty much basically all I need to do for that and as that was not really the best job I've done with these type of plugs it's because this cable is so stiff and thick that um, yeah it's just hard to work with and I verify that this plug actually does plug into the back of the soldering iron it does it's nice and uh, a, a firm fit it's not loose or anything so I'm happy with that um, that'll allow me to power the soldering iron. So what I've got to do now is I've got to actually plug it in um, to the soldering iron 
and verify that the soldering iron works. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I got the power supply plugged into the soldering iron. The power board is turned off that it's connected to. And the soldering iron station control unit is actually turned on at the back. So if I turn the main switch on, look at that. Working just fine. And there's an extra volt there. Well, actually, had an extra volt and a half, really, because it was 19.2. Um, it seems to be working okay. It seems stable. The power supply doesn't seem to be making any strange noises. It is going internally. Um, it's not like a hissing sound or anything. It's like a slight little bit of a buzzing sound as the oscillator is getting feedback from the output and adjusting the output. It's just changing the PWM a little. So I'm com I can hear some PWM artifacts when I put my ear right up to it. But, yeah, it, it, it'll, it'll do the purpose. I mean, if it fails, it fails. Um, usually these things should have an internal fuse, so if anything short circuits on the either the low side or the high side, it just blows the fuse so you don't take out, you know, your power board or your circuit breaker. Um, and the good thing about this house is it has circuit breakers, not fuses, which is nice. So, yeah. And because the power board that this is connected to is can be turned off with its own switch, uh, actually on the power board, down there, um, that means that I can actually turn all the equipment off at the same time, including the soldering iron. So, for instance, I can turn the meter on. I can trip over things. I can turn the oscilloscope on. And that power board has its own USB charger output, which is um, nice. Uh, I can turn this power supply on, I can turn this power supply on, I can turn this one on, and the soldering on. And with the flick of a switch, everything goes off. Nice. So, uh, as this multimeter up here also makes some strange noises when it's plugged into the mains but it's turned off when it's in standby. It's like little bits of buzzing going on around there. I think uh, it's better that I actually have this isolated with its own switch so it's not just, you know, powering up things like this constantly when it's not being used. Um, I think that would be the order of the day, but I can hit the master switch and well the meter remembered it was turned on so I can turn that off and yeah well the soldering iron hadn't cooled enough anyway so it's still at 340 degrees celsius so anyway repurposing an old laptop power supply which you don't have the laptop for anymore uh, hope you enjoyed this video if you did please remember to go down below like comment and subscribe and uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. As always, this is Yashro3 saying see ya. Have a great day.